In this video, we're going to take a look at the formal definition of a limit, which is the epsilon delta limit definition. So previously we have talked about the informal definition that says if f of x becomes arbitrarily close to a single number L as x approaches C from either side, then the limit of f of x as x approaches C is L. And then we have the correct notation. But the problem with this informal definition is that we have two things that are not well defined. f of x becomes arbitrarily close to a single number L. So what does arbitrarily close mean? Or as x approaches C, how do we know how close x needs to get to C? So that's where we get the formal definition of a limit. The formal definition of a limit looks like this. Let's let this be C and this be L. I purposely didn't put any numbers on, the, on this picture. So we're saying let F be a function defined on an open interval containing C except possibly at C. So that what this means is it could be that the limit is undefined at that point. Um, which we'll get to more examples of that, but we've already seen that a little bit. Let L be some real number. So the statement, the limit as X approaches C of F of X equals L means that for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that if zero is less than X minus C is less than delta, then F of X minus L is less than epsilon. So you probably are like, Okay, what does that even mean? Well, here's what that means. When we're looking at C, we're saying there's some value of delta where I can take C minus delta and I can take C plus delta. So we're saying delta is sort of like the radius from C. So that we're saying if zero is less than or equal to X minus C is less than Delta. And again, this is an absolute value and that's why we can go in either direction from C. So anywhere in here within Delta on either side of C, then the limit, the function itself minus the limit again, that is in absolute value so that we can go on either side of L, we're saying the limit within epsilon, so this would be like L plus epsilon and this would be L minus epsilon, that the limit is going to be in that neighborhood. So it's again, it's kind of like a radius. So this is what the formal definition says. Now the important thing here is that you understand that as I change epsilon, if I were to make epsilon wider, let's pick a different color. So if I made epsilon instead of this distance, I made it this distance. So obviously a little bit bigger. Well, that's going to change delta as well. So it's going to change the size of the delta neighborhood because I've changed epsilon as well. Let's take a look at an example that might help us to understand a little bit better. So I've recopied that formal limit definition, the epsilon delta limit definition above. And now I have a question that says, given the limit that um, as X approaches three of two X minus five equals one, which of course we could have found ourselves two times three is six minus five that equals one. So just by direct substitution in this case, we are asked to find the value of delta given that this value is less than 0 0.01. So how, what are we going to do here? Well, let's look back at the limit definition. It says there exists some delta greater than zero such that if zero is less than the difference of X and C is less than delta, then f of x minus l is less than epsilon. So f of x minus l, this is f of x, is 
2x minus 5. So if I find the absolute value of 2x minus 5, which is f of x, minus the limit, again the limit was 1, let's see if that matches up. So I have 2x minus 5 minus 1. So I get 2x minus 6, because minus 5 and minus 1 gives me minus 6. Well, 2x minus 6, I can rewrite as 2 times the quantity of x minus 3. And I can divide each side by 2, so I get x minus 3 um, is less than 0 0.005, or 5 one thousandth. So what does that tell me? Well, remember, the limit is whenever 0 is less than x minus 3 is less than 0 0.005. So what is delta? What delta do I have to find? 0 0.005. So I've solved in this case for delta. What if we weren't given a value for epsilon? So on the last example, we knew that epsilon was 0 0.01, even though they didn't specify this is the value of epsilon, they gave us that inequality already. So here, we don't have that inequality. We don't know what epsilon is. Uh, we don't know what delta is. We have to actually determine what delta would be in terms of epsilon. So what we have to do in this case, we're going to use the limit definition to prove that the limit as x approaches 2 of 3x minus 2 is equal to 4. And essentially what we're doing is we're finding what does delta equal in terms of epsilon. So what we have to do is show that for each epsilon, there exists a unique delta such that this is true. The absolute value of 3x minus 2 minus 4, which is of course f of x minus l is less than epsilon. Whenever 0 is less than x minus 2, absolute value is less than delta. So because it has to be a unique value, we have to determine it in terms of epsilon. So how am I going to make a connection between these two things? Well, all I have to do is start with the 3x minus 2 minus 4 is less than epsilon. Just like I did on the last example, I'm just going to do some math inside that absolute value. So this is actually 3x minus 6. And then I can say that's 3 times the quantity of x minus 2. So this helps because if you'll notice, the limit definition says I have to show that 0 is less than x minus 2 is less than delta for some delta, right, based on what epsilon is. Well, what is um, epsilon? We don't know. But what I do know is that epsilon divided by 3 would give me the unique delta value. So what is delta? Delta is whatever I got for epsilon and then dividing it by 3 because that's what I was able to divide by to get to where I want to go. Here's one last example to go through. So feel free to press pause and try this question on your own. If you're not quite ready for that, just hang tight and we'll go through it together. So this one, we're actually asked to find the limit ourselves first and then use the epsilon delta definition to prove the limit is whatever we find it to be. So first part, super duper easy. We know how to find the limit as x approaches negative 3. I can use direct substitution. 2 times negative 3 plus 5. So I'm going to write the limit as x approaches negative 3. I'm just going to call it f of x is equal to 2 times negative 3 plus 5, which is, of course, negative 6 plus 5, or negative 1. So negative 1 is going to be equal to L. So now what I have to do is show that the absolute value of 2x plus 5 minus negative 1, because that's my value for L, is less than epsilon, gives me some value for delta such that 0 is less than x minus negative 3, so x plus 3 is less than delta. So that's where we get those two quantities. 
So just like I did last time, I'm just going to do the math right here. This is 2x plus 5, and then this is actually plus 1. So that's plus 6 is less than epsilon. That gives me 2 times the quantity x plus 3 is less than epsilon, which happens to be exactly what I need for delta. So the absolute value of x plus 3 has to be less than ep I'm sorry, epsilon divided by 2. So again, delta is equal to epsilon divided by 2. Now that we have a strong foundation in exactly what a limit is, let's take a look at some of the properties of limits.